The iPhone 15 launch draws ever closer, and that means an uptick in rumors about the new phones coming in the fall. From what we've already heard, this year's update could bring some big changes in terms of design and features. We could also see the iPhone 15 feature in more rounded design so that it's more comfortable to hold one of Apple's new phones. Upgrades to the cameras and chipsets could also be in the works. Expect a large iPhone 15 vs 15 Pro divide as Apple saves its most significant changes for its premium phones. Both the 15 Pro and Pro Max should feature a powerful new 3M17 Bionic chip and a titanium-sided design. The Pro Max could go one step further with a new periscope lens that improves its zoom capabilities. Here's a deep dive into everything we know about the iPhone 15 series so far and if you are new to the channel, then don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment. Even with the announcement of Apple's new augmented reality headset, anticipation, and rumors haven't dampened for the fall release of Apple's next iPhone, presumably called the iPhone 15. Those rumors, plus last year's EU ruling mandating USB-C charging on phones sold within Europe, might mean a number of departures from Apple's traditional design. Will the iPhone 15 have a USB-C port? Will Apple increase prices in 2023? Will it even be called the iPhone 15? No one outside of Apple knows for sure, but these reports will certainly feed our curiosity until Apple throws the next iPhone event, probably in September. Let's start with a recent rumor, according to noted Apple analysts, Ming-Chi Kuo, the iPhone 15 will run on an upgraded ultra-wideband processor, which Apple calls the U1 chip to better integrate with the company's new Air headset, the Vision Pro. Ultra-wideband is a short-range wireless communication standard often used to track down the location of objects. It can, can pinpoint your Apple AirTag or unlock your car as you walk up to it with your phone. In a recent post on Twitter, Ku said this is all part of Apple's broader strategy to build a more competitive ecosystem for Vision Pro. When it comes to the phone's displays, we're expecting the iPhone 15 to deliver one major improvement over the 14. The latter sports a 6.1-inch Super XDR OLED display that offers a 2532 by 1170 pixel resolution, and rumors suggest the 15 will follow suit. However, the lineup is all but certain to inherit the dynamic island, Apple's fancy screen cutout, from the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, which should give the phone a more premium feel. Potential evidence for this claim has emerged too with leaked videos showing the front glass for reportedly three iPhone 15 models. They all include dynamic islands along with slightly curved bezels, with the Pro models having smaller bezels than the standard ones. We're not expecting the 15 line's dynamic islands to be identical to the ones currently featured on Apple's flagship devices though, according to a recent tweet from Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. The iPhone 15's proximity sensor will be integrated inside the dynamic island itself rather than positioned below it. As Kuo notes, the new sensor arrangement is unlikely to result in any material difference to the appearance or functionality of the 15 versus the 14 Pro. But the former's dynamic island will technically be more advanced than the latter's given the inclusion of a previously isolated sensor. Beyond the dynamic island though, the iPhone 15's display is expected to remain identical to its predecessors. Both the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max boast adaptive 1 to 120 Hz refresh rate technology or said to be promotion and automatically adjusts the smoothness of their displays to suit whatever's happening on screen. But it looks like the iPhone 15 will again be sticking with the 14's static 60 Hz refresh rate. On the port front, device is expected to get a USB-C charging port instead of the 14's lightning port. The EU has told Apple that it has to add USB-C charging ports to iPhones from 2024, but all the signs point towards the company adopting the new charging standard in 2023. Some of those rumors are backed up by dummy units in the market has been able to source. Further renders of the 15 Plus emerged in February 2023, showing more of those aforementioned design changes. USB-C, more rounded edges, and the addition of the dynamic island on the less expensive models. It looks as though the dimensions of the iPhone 15 handsets are going to be more or less the same as their 14 equivalents. Although, as mentioned, there are reportedly going to be some slight variations in the size of the camera bumps. Annoyingly, however, it looks like the remainder of the design differences between the 14 and 15 series, titanium sides, thinner bezels, and so on, will be reserved for the latter's Pro models. But that's just what we've come to expect from Apple in recent years. It's also worth noting that Apple may be preparing to move to eSIM in countries outside the US for the iPhone 15, with eSIM reportedly coming to the next generation of Apple's best device in France. This is big news for all prospective 15 buyers outside of the US.
Given the scale of integration with mobile carriers needed to support the implementation of eSIM in countries that don't already use them widely, it's unlikely that Apple will be able to flick a switch and ditch the SIM card tray for every 15 models sold in Europe come September. But major Apple markets like the UK seem ready to join France in its adoption of eSIMs. The vanilla variant is likewise expected to get a dual sensor camera setup, though rumors indicate that the iPhone 15 will inherit the 48 megapixels main sensor boasted by the 14 Pro and Pro Max, rather than the 12 megapixels main sensor used by the vanilla 14. While the 14's cameras are adequate enough for general photography tasks, they're essentially unchanged from the iPhone 13, so it's good to hear that Apple will be giving vanilla iPhone fans a tangible reason to consider upgrading to the iPhone 15 this year. That's not to say the gap between the 15 and its pro siblings will be any smaller than the usual vanilla slash pro divide mind. The 15 Pro and Ultra are set for some serious camera upgrades come September, with one or both models expected to feature periscope cameras and the biggest iPhone camera sensors ever. The Ultra could even get a telephoto camera with a variable zoom lens too. On the selfie snapping front, the 14's 12 megapixels selfie camera is expected to remain in place on the vanilla 15. A new report suggests that the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro lineups will feature significantly larger batteries this year. The biggest change will reportedly come to the standard iPhone 15, but the 15 Pro improvements shouldn't be overlooked. This is especially true with rumors of the iPhone 15 Pro using new chip technology this year. The 15 is said to have a 3877, the 15 Plus has 4912, the 15 Pro goes with 3650, and the Pro Max has 4852 MA battery. Thus, the increases are pretty significant across the board, and if this rumor pans out, it's pretty clear that Apple's devices will rank very high in our battery tests. It's the first time any iPhone would get this close to 5000 mAh, and when you factor in Apple's notoriously optimized in-house design chips, battery life on all of these should be outstanding. One interesting battery rumor surrounding the lineup is the potential addition of reverse wireless charging, which would see the vanilla model capable of wirelessly charging other Apple gadgets, where its predecessor can't. We're less certain about this particular feature prediction though as leaks surrounding wireless charging on iPhones have existed for years. When it comes to the core specs of the iPhone 15, there's some things we're almost certain of. For example, we expect the standard 15 to inherit the 14 Pro's A16 Bionic, just as the standard 14 inherited the 13 Pro's A15 Bionic. We've heard this multiple times now, so it'll be a surprise if Apple bucks its own trend come September. The inclusion of an A16 Bionic in the 15 should technically make the device feel snappier than the 14, though the latter is certainly no slouch when it comes to performance. Bad news is that we're also expecting to see an A17 Bionic come September, which, you guessed it, seems destined for the 15 Pro and 15 Ultra exclusively. That said, the iPhone 14 is plenty fast enough for most users and the 15, by offering even more power under the hood, will likewise meet the demands of streaming, swiping, snapping and gaming with ease. Sticking with chipsets, it seems likely that Qualcomm will be supplying the 5G modem again. The Snapdragon X70 looks certain to get picked for the lineup, offering improved performance from the Snapdragon X65 and the 14. As for the other specs, we've heard predictions that the Pro models are going to make the jump to 8 gigs of RAM with the iPhone 15. Another difference between the Pro and non-Pro models could be support for Wi-Fi 6E in the case of the Pro models. As mentioned, we might also see a USB-C port included on every model, though reports suggest that only the Pro models will offer upgraded data transfer speeds. This has now been stated by multiple sources. The 15 Pro and Ultra could apparently have data transfer speeds of either 20 or 40 gigs per second while the standard iPhone 15 will reportedly be stuck with the same 480 map speeds as the current models. So these are the biggest differences between the base and top models. So what are your expectations from upcoming iPhone lineup? Share your valuable thoughts below in the comment section. And if you guys enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel will be massive and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you for the next time. Peace out.